Hey friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Um, I'm taking a little break today, but I'm taking this time to answer some questions that have come up and um, that I just wanted to share with you guys. Uh, first off, though, I have to say thank you to everybody. Uh, I made it to 10,000 subscribers this week. And it really lifted my spirits. We've been going through, you know, some issues like everybody does. And uh, it was really, it was a really nice pick me up. But I was going to do, I was thinking about doing a, a uh, subscriber appreciate, appreciation giveaway. But at this point, um, with the holidays and with some other things we're going through, I can't do it right now. But please don't think that it's not going to happen there will be one probably later on down the road okay uh i want to say thanks to jeff from missouri wind and solar we got our 45 watt uh solar panel and we haven't done an unboxing yet because we just haven't had the time but with we also received this it's called a kilowatt and what this does is you plug this into the wall and then you plug whatever appliance your TV your lights your computer whatever into this and this will give you a digital readout of just how much electrical consumption that device is doing so you can bet there's going to be a few videos of us going around the house plugging in you know TVs and computer our computer and and uh you know maybe my kitchen aid and all those things to actually find out what we consume or what those appliances consume in electricity so thanks jeff that's really cool so you're going to see more of that um minnie and penny want to say thank you to barkley the devil dog and his mom they got their uh their sweet potato treats and their little presents, which I'm going to hang on the tree because if I don't hang them on the tree, they'll probably eat them, even though they're wrapped. So, I mean, Penny or Minnie was so excited. I was making pinwheel cookies yesterday, and she jumped up on the, when I left the room, she got up on a chair and the table and ate half a log of dough. She barfed green. It wasn't pretty. But um, she's very excited. So, and our, ta our, our tree is only five feet. Uh, our, our, the tree we bought this year is only five feet, and we're putting it up on a, on a table. So if I hang it on the tree, the dogs will leave it alone. I hope. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, I got some questions. Terry asks, can you please give us a video about the way you use cotton tablecloths for things like raising bread or rolling pastry? I haven't done well with cloth cover to cover my bread. It dries out, but I tend to do longer rises than you. And I wonder how you clean the cloths if you flour them. Why do you roll pastry on the cloth, etc.? And how do you clean it? And what kind of cloth? Well, okay, that's quite a few questions, but I think I can answer them all really quick. I learned how to roll pastry. It's one of the things I learn from my mother on a cloth she used to you know the white aprons you see me wear the very first one i had used to belong to my mother and i could never figure out why she never wore it and i could never figure out why the strap was broken on it until i was much older and it was wrapped around the rolling pin in the drawer um, years 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 after my mother passed away and i asked dad why is why did I never see mom wear this apron? And he said, because she used it for rolling out pastry on. And I tried it because I had been making bread and pastry and all that stuff. And on a wooden kitchen table, it can be a real pain in the butt to clean. So I usually save old, if I find them at yard sales, cotton tablecloths or linen tablecloths. And I save them and I use them to roll my dough on. I flour the cloth, I roll my dough, I knead my dough, and I put, when I'm rising my dough, I oil the, when I'm rising bread dough, I oil the bowl and I put the bread dough in it and then I flip the bread dough over so it's oiled on top. And then I put the cloth over it, flour side down. 
and that way it doesn't dry out and it doesn't stick. Um, but as for cleaning it, it's really easy. I mean, you roll your dough, you do whatever you got to do, then you take your tablecloth and you stand, you step out your front door and you flick, 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 and all the flour goes all over the place. And then you throw out the washing machine. Boom. Bob's your uncle. It's clean. So I, I have never looked back after using tablecloths that way or even old aprons. I just never use terry cloth because of the thread loops. So... Um, and you, but any kind of old apron or tablecloth, folded tablecloth, will do just nicely. And Itzuki, Itzuki D says, I would like to see you do a series on freezer meals for an entire month. Some to put in the crock pot and the rest to take out of the freezer and pop into the oven. Well, <clears throat> an entire month? Well, let's, let's you know... If you count the ones I've been doing towards Christmas, the the uh, venison veggie casserole, the shepherd's pie, the lasagna, the and the other ones, the cabbage rolls, the meatballs, those are those are at least five right there. I don't do normally a lot of freezer meals. I used to when I worked um, before my knees and back went really bad. I used to do that. I would make things like shepherd's pies and meatloaves and I would cook them. And then before I go to work, I would pop like a, a cooked meatloaf in the crock pot, put potatoes and carrots and an onion around it and pour a jar of, or, or make up a whip up a bit of gravy and pour it over top and then put it on low and go to work. But I, I'm, I'm one of those people who actually really likes to cook fresh. The only reason I'm doing a lot of these freezer meals is because I have, it looks like I'm going to have now the count, the final count is five extra people coming on the 20th and staying until, I think my son may be staying and his girlfriend will be staying till Christmas day or Christmas eve, evening and then the rest will be here in, through Boxing Day. So I, I want to spend time with my family. I want to play cards. I want to play video games. I want to, you know, bake cookies and stuff with them. So... I made these meals ahead, but it's not something I normally do. And somebody recently asked me about my tattoos. Now, I can, folks, I have people ask me how many tattoos I have. It depends on how you look at it. You can say that I have 11 tattoos, or you can say I have one tattoo. It's just not all connected yet. <laughs> but um, there's, a, there's a story that goes with my tattoos, and not necessarily... Well, most of the pictures uh, are all very personal. I don't know how well you can see. I'll show you. These two birds right here, the red one, even though it is a male, represents my mother. And the that's a cardinal. And the evening grosbeak on the other side represents my father. And I will tell you that story. Um, when I was, my mother passed away when I was nine and my father was a real romantic and he was, he was also dramatic in a very quiet way. For instance, they had one of their bedroom, they got a new bedroom set. I don't know. It was before I was born and it was called blonde, which means it was really, really, really pale wood and almost white. And then Mom put a white bedspread on the bed and dad painted the walls Chinese, the bedroom walls Chinese red. So with the white bedspread and the blonde furniture and the white ceiling and the white blinds and the white sheer curtains, it was very, very dramatic looking. And there's a picture um, that I have to have repaired because it is my absolute favorite picture of my mother. My mother had dark hair and she was all dressed in a beautiful black lace dress and she sat on the on the bed with her feet curled under her and her red lipstick on and for some reason that just the the cardinal whenever i see it i think of my mother even though she's wearing a black dress but she's in black white and red and it was it was beautiful it was a very, such a beautiful picture and my the the evening gross beak is a christmas story um, when I was 12 years old, we moved, my father had a heart attack when I was 11. And when I was 12, we moved to the country 
and my father went on a disability pension and we couldn't afford Christmas that year. I mean, we could afford Christmas, but we couldn't afford Christmas that we had been used to. And dad had told us this year, um, Christmas is our house. That's our gift. So we went out onto our lot. I think we had a little over two acres and we went out, we found a Christmas tree and we decorated it. And we had very little furniture in that house because that house we had built. Um, we built the house. So being on a pension, finishing the inside and decorating the inside wasn't a priority. So we had very little furniture because while the house was being in built, we, we could only store so much at my uncle's house. So we had uh, a couple of, we had a table of chairs, we had our beds, and we had a black and white TV, a stereo, and a couple of flip-flop foam chairs that folded down into beds. Pl floors were plywood, walls were drywall, un unmudded, all that stuff. And Dad, it was really hard on Dad to explain to us, because I was 12, that our gift that year was going to be our home because there was no money for anything else. And I mean, even though it was a poor Christmas, we didn't lack for gifts. I mean, I got a toque and, and a scarf and mittens for my aunt and a macrame set for my brother and, and it was, it was, and a pair of slippers for my dad. So it was, but the bird story, my father had built a bird feeder out and, and our house was a viceroy and it had a nice deck out front and we it was up in very much like country like this lots of trees and rocks and stuff and dad had built we we were from toronto so you know we were used to sparrows and starlings and not much else and pigeons and seagulls and all that kind of thing but you know anything with color was kind of an exotic thing to us so christmas morning 1976 I woke up and I looked down the hallway and there was my dad standing at the patio at the sliding glass doors looking outside and it was beautiful and sunny and crisp and cold and snow was everywhere and he heard my bedroom door open and he turned around and he looked down the hall at me with his cup of tea in his hand and he said come here and I walked down to the patio door and under his bird feet, feeder, and we counted, in all this wonderland of white was 22 evening grosbeaks eating all the seed that dad had put out. And it was the prettiest thing I had ever seen in my life. And uh, I went, wow. And my dad turned to me and handed me his cup of tea for a sip and he put his arm around me and he said Merry Christmas. The evening rose speak on my arm represents that. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> all my tattoos in one way or another represent my father because when he was 18 he went into the Air Force and of course of course he got tattoos. He got one of a skull with a crown on his head, uh, on his one arm, a skull with a crown on its head, and it said Fagin, true till death, because my dad was a huge Oliver Twist fan, and he just thought that old fart Fagin, who, you know, would take in the street kids and teach them how to be pickpockets, he just thought he was a riot. Um, and the other one was a cobra coiled to strike, ready to strike. And I remember when I was about five, sitting on his knee one morning before he went to work and saying, I'm rubbing his arms, you know, rubbing the tattoos on his arms and saying, I want a tattoo so bad, daddy. When can I have a tattoo? And, and oh my God, my poor father appalled that his five-year-old daughter wanted tattoos, um, tried very lovingly, but very firmly to explain to me that tattoos were not for girls. Tattoos were were as good as a fingerprint you were marked for life back then they didn't have laser treatment to remove tattoos um that once you got a tattoo you were you, it was a decision that you made and it was permanent so he tried to talk me out of it but um two years into sobriety or three years into sobriety 
I, I remember confessing to Howie that I wanted a tattoo. I've always wanted a tattoo. And my father had passed away, uh, had just passed away. And uh, Howie said then, get a tattoo. And a whole new part of my heart opened up because somebody was giving me permission to do what I always wanted to do. But you know what? I couldn't do it while my father was alive. Anyway, I'm sorry for rambling, but um, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from Our Half Acre Homestead saying, uh, we've got more videos coming, but I just wanted to uh, have a chat with y'all. All right? You guys take care, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye.